what current regulations, if any, are there in place for cryptocurrency? Well, essentially none, unless you include in what counts as regulation, you know, the, uh, the a basic legal structure in society, you know, property rights, um, a, some, some sort of judiciary to, to adjudicate disputes, um, rule of law. Um, I mean, in that sense, you could say that people can claim that they have Bitcoin, they own Bitcoin, they trade it with someone else. But Bitcoin, by design, doesn't necessarily need that sort of infrastructure. And indeed, if you, if you combine the, uh, the concept of a digital currency with a distributed ledger, as it were, and modern encryption technology, in theory, transactions are so anonymous, there would be no recourse to fraud. And th the purpose of more activist regulation in the world we inhabit today, and this certainly includes the financial and banking system, is to try and make sure that fraud does not take place, and that if you discover it somewhere, there, there is recourse to that. And, that. and hence why, in fact, because the, the whole nature of finance and banking and money is that it, it's, it is intangible, and you really do need some sort of robust framework to prevent things being missold and to prevent uh, duplicate transactions and other forms of fraud within that. So if you're a punter and you've gone and bought a load of whatever it may be, whatever a cryptocurrency that you've invested in, and then something happens and it crashes or you feel like you've been uh, done, done by badly, there's really no one you can go to and say, help, someone's nicked my crypto coins. Well, as, as it stands now, we are operating, at least with respect to Bitcoin, this is not true necessarily of all of these digital currencies springing up, but with respect to Bitcoin, it really is caveat emptor, in extremis. <laughs> that is what you currently have. Now, in a way, again, that's by design, and you could argue that people are embracing that as they choose to uh, invest in, or some would argue, purely speculate in Bitcoin. And so, you know, it is still a regulatory no man's land. But now, I mean, as as as, as Professor Mitzelbottom, <laughs> I just started to pronounce that name, explained, uh, it has, so many people are involved in it. So many households, the, the the proverbial widows and orphans, are getting involved. And so, I can see the political push now to try to create some sort of regulatory framework. But again. Can you regulate something which is designed to be unregulated? It's a good question, and no one has a clear answer, has a clear answer yet. I think I always get the impression that cryptocurrency is used by dodgy people on the dark web to pay for nefarious things. Is that, is that right? Well, I mean, let's place this in context, okay? As we know, money laundering occurs a lot and almost everywhere that there is a bank, that there is a currency, no matter how well regulated it is. The idea that somehow cryptocurrency is suddenly enabling a greater amount of money laundering or you know, who knows what it is, tax avoidance, evasion, and so on and so forth, it's actually currently difficult to make that case. And indeed, you know, the, the biggest money laundering cases ever tend to include major currencies and major too big to fail banks. So the idea that somehow these upstart cryptos are the source of the problem, I think, is not true. That said, yes, they probably can be abused if desired. Let's keep in mind, cryptocurrency or digital currency more generally is a technology. All technologies can theoretically be used for good or evil. They can be used either honestly or dishonestly. I'm not sure there's anything fundamentally dishonest about the structure of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies. Does, is there a risk that cryptocurrencies, if there's all of a sudden a huge flight of uh, hard currency or capital out of the hard currency market, where people like me, you know, I finish doing this program and I think, that's it, I think crypto is the way forward, I'm going to throw all my savings into crypto, and a lot of people do the same, could that pose a risk to hard currencies and things like, you know, gold-backed investment? Well, let's think about the current monetary system that we have. And this is true throughout the world, basically. You have national so-called fiat currencies that, in theory, have no inherent intrinsic value but are the legal tender of the land and the tender in which you must keep your account in order to calculate your tax liabilities, so on and so forth. And, and, and the governments are there, the central banks are there with the help of the governments to enforce their acceptance. Okay. Well, that sounds nice, like a robust regulatory framework, but history demonstrates that, in fact, it can be abused. Sometimes central banks print too much money. Sometimes they cause big inflation problems. Sometimes those inflation problems are so big, they cause the complete collapse of the monetary and financial system. And we've seen quite a few examples of this, indeed so many, that no unbacked paper currency has ever survived in history, except for those currently in existence. And those have been only truly unbacked since the 1970s, 
which is you know, still within the lifetime of <laughs> an awful lot of people alive today. In a way, while many regard uh, cryptocurrency as a grand monetary experiment, a fascinating one to watch, you can make the case that the entire unbacked paper fiat money ex- is a world that we live in is also a running experiment that has yet to conclude. And in a world of zero or negative interest rates, quantitative easing, exponential rates of money supply growth, and banks that are still in many cases appear to be relatively uh, weak, potentially unstable, undercapitalized, that looks like an experiment to me that may not conclude the way people want it to.